Hello and welcome to today's video about the comparison between transient and static earth fault detection. This is Power Grid Expert, the YouTube channel about distribution networks. Today we will have a look at earth faults in compensated and isolated networks and we make a comparison about the differences between static earth fault detection and transient earth fault detection. A little introduction about myself. I am focusing on the distribution grid. I am offering installation services, protection relay testing, SCADA systems, digital grid consulting and training for everything related to the distribution grid and especially here about the intelligent technologies inside the substations. We will focus as always on the distribution grid. So that is meant the, the network between the power station um, like 20 kV, 10 kV um, until the substations, the secondary substations in the network. In these networks, we can have uh, one phase faults, so-called earth faults and in the compensated and isolated network, there are some specialities about those networks. Let's have a quick look at the start point earthing in those networks. In compensated networks, we have a so-called Peterson coil. In isolated networks, um, just to remove that part, there is basically just nothing. The start point is floating. Both networks have the big advantage that in case of a one phase fault, the network can still be operated. The end customer will not know that the network has a problem. So that gives the grid operator the possibility to look for the fault, to isolate the fault and to clear the fault and run the network again without the end customer having any power failure. Peterson coil here are two examples. On the left side, it's one of the very first Peterson coils, it's nowadays exhibited in the German Museum in Munich. And on the right side, you see um, the recent, a, a recent version of the Peterson coil. Let's have a look at the data, what happens during an earth fault in those networks. First of all, we have a look here at the zero sequence voltage and zero sequence current. If, the, if there is no fault in the network, these signals are basically zero. And when an earth fault happens, uh, this changes dramatically, as you can see here. The transient signal at the beginning of the earth fault um, is on the one side quite high compared to the following static earth fault. But it's also very short. So we're talking here about a frequency between 100 hertz and 1 kilohertz typically. Um, so the detection devices have to be rather quick to detect the fault. And if there is a static fault, like the earth fault is staying in the network, then we have the so-called static earth fault. We have a 50 hertz zero sequence voltage and we have a 50 hertz uh, zero sequence current. And these signals are used to find the fault. The transient detection only looks at the transient at the beginning of the fault. The static um, methods are looking at the 50 hertz signal. The static methods, um, there are a, a bunch of different methods. Today we will focus on sinus v cosinus v method. These are the most um, used methods here, um, but I want to mention, of course, there are more methods available. Let's have a look at the transient method. As I said, the transient is very short, but luckily very high. So if we look at here, this um, is a measurement of a real earth fault. We have, let's say, a peak of 104 amps in the zero sequence current and also in the voltage like well above 10 kV. So these signals can be detected um, pretty, pretty good, even with mediocre sensors. And what the method then does is it compares the very first half wave 
of both signals and compares if they are in phase or um, shifted 180 degrees. That is pretty nice because we, we only look at the, at the level, the trip level of the current and the voltage. Um, and then we make a comparison, both half waves are negative, one half, is, half wave is positive, uh, the other one is negative. And this is a quite easy criteria um, that allows also some tolerances for the de measurement devices, for the detection devices, but also for the sensors. Sometimes there is an additional criteria added to filter out pure transient earth faults um, that are not followed by a static earth fault. Let's say in the overhead network there is a bird, um, there is um, there is a branch of a tree going in and out, and in some for some operators they might not even want to get an information about that because it's not a static earth fault. So we can filter out these. Um, pure transient faults with this additional criteria to look if after the transient there is a 50 hertz zero sequence voltage present or not. As a summary, this is quite a stable method, but it is important to know that it only happens at the very beginning of the earth fault and then it does not happen again. Um, especially if you are using some, if you have an open loop network and you're using um, earth fault um, search methods like switching on, um, switching the normally open point to somewhere else, this transient method will not trigger again. This is important to know. And as all earth fault methods, independent of if it's transient or static, um, in these compensated and isolated networks, Indications may occur all over the, net, the network, not only in the faulty feeder. But in these other cases, they will point to the direction of the fault location. The static methods um, I use here as an example, the cosinus V method, with, which is used in um, compensated networks, so networks with Peterson calls. These methods look at the 50 hertz signal once the earth fault is um, present for a longer time and static, there, there by the name. Um, and then we look at the angle between the zero sequence voltage and the zero sequence currents. In comparison to the transient method where you could say, well, we are measuring as well somehow the, the angle between those signals. So where is the difference? The difference here is that this um, static method is quite sensitive because um, this is the theory. So um, serial sequence voltage and serial sequence current are close together. But in reality, these are normally like roughly 90, 90 degrees um, phase shifted. And you can see easily that it goes to the, to the point where the methods indicates forward or backwards. That makes it very sensitive and that means we need to have very good sensors. We need to have a very precise measurement to get a reliable indication here. So, how do we proceed in case of a fault? We have our feeder here, normally open point there. Uh, fault location is between these two secondary substations. And in case of an earth fault, first of all, of course, the protection relay in the faulty feeder indicates that there's an earth fault pointing towards the feeder. Also, the indicators, if they are present, will point towards the fault location. As I mentioned, it can also happen. There is an indication of the earth fault behind the fault location, but it points also towards the fault location and also in the healthy part of the feeder or in, in totally different areas of the network, these backward indications might occur. This is important to know, but once you know, you can filter them out easily. So, earth fault detection is often not present in every secondary substation because the, the indicators just over the last years got precise enough um, to, to use the different methods. 
So it might easily occur that in some secondary substation you don't have an indicator. What happens here? How do you proceed in these um, cases? Same, um, same example, fault location between these two secondary substations. So there is no indicator. That means we have, of course, the um, protection relay indicating the problem. We have that indicator and that indicator pointing towards the fault location. And also we have those backward indications. So what to do in this case? Um, and this is, let's say, a good example sometimes. Um, there is even maybe only one directional earth fault indicator in this feeder. Um, so where's where's the advantage at all if you're not having a persistent indication all in, in, in all secondary substations? The idea here is that you use a combination of the different um, proceeding um, of the fault searching, fault location searching. At the very beginning, if these indicators are only transient indicators, they will point towards the fault location. You might not have this indication, but still you know, okay, there's the last indication. So the, the fault has to be somewhere somewhere here. Um, if, if, you, if you remove that one and maybe it's also not present. So what you can do now is to do this, the, the classic earth fault um, um, method to, to check for the fault location. You start to shift the normally open point to let's say here, and then look if these um, protection relay indications are flipping their direction or not. So for example, if we shift the normally open point up here, maybe to that, um, to that secondary substation where there is no indication. What happens now is this, the, the transient indicators, they will still, th there is no new trigger, we just shifted the normally open point there is no new trigger, they will not flip that direction, but up there the protection relays, which are normally equipped with static earth fault detection, they flip the direction. So that one goes maybe backwards, but that one here will definitely go forwards because the normally open point is here, so the fault current will flow through all these stations towards the fault location. You might say, so where's 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 the advantage here? I'm, I still need to search. I will still need to switch over. Yes, that's true. But even with with one indicator in the middle of your feeder, you already can um, narrow down the location of the fault, and that helps you and makes the fault, the search for the fault, much quicker. And of course, the more indicators you have, the better it gets. Once your the full feeder is equipped there is no switchover needed at all, which is a big advantage in those networks because during the earth fault you have a higher voltage on the healthy phases. That means that if anywhere else in that network you have a weak point, cable joint or potential transformer or whatever, uh, there's a higher risk that this one blows up and then you will have a double earth fault, which nobody wants. So narrowing down the time of the search, clearing the fault as quickly as possible is a huge advantage. As a summary, um, as you can see, both methods or both approaches like the transient and the static have their pros and cons. The transient is a little bit more reliable because the signals are higher, but it only happens once. Um, the static earth fault is a bit sensitive to, um, to the quality of the measured signals, um, but it flips over during, during your search, which can be an advantage. So as a summary, it, it comes down to you have to have a close look at your own network, what is available, um, how big is the network, how high is the, are the earth fault currents, how high are the transients, and then you can decide which method is the best for your own network. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and follow my YouTube channel Power Grid Expert. If you have further questions, if you want to get a detailed analysis of your own network, if you want to get my recommendation about what to do to narrow down, to shrink 
the search time for the fourth. And then contact me, contact data is below. Thank you for watching.